What are the best ways that faculty can help you with note taking? and there is a syllabus and everything is online and all the readings are online. Sometimes I have to put my pen key That's in order to get access. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's really, really helpful to have everything digitized too. And I, I personally have to print things out to read them better and stuff. I don't like reading on the computer, but it's really helpful when I can just go and I have a website and I can see that. Sometimes I do wish that um, things posted to, let's say, Blackboard or, or that uh, like the course documents that are posted online, that I wish they were editable, which is not a word, but that I could edit them also and take notes in them. Um, that way I don't have to go back and like have a stack of papers on one side and then have all my notes that are like happening and changing as the class goes on on the other side. Um, but yeah, an online syllabus is really, really useful, especially because it links to everything else and that everything is online already. You don't have to worry about which documents you have with you and which documents you don't. When you find out a class will be using a blog or a wiki, do you think, oh no, or all right, this will be useful? Oh no. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's really not that much of a pain because it doesn't take long the blogs, the, the requirements they have, but it's just sort of an additional, I mean, the internet is a very complex place, so just having to go, go back into another nook and, cranny, nook, and, nook and cranny of it to do that, this sort of comes out to be sort of irritating. It is because no one really, I mean, we don't, we don't really have time to read everyone's blog postings and really have a good discussion. At least I haven't always seen that happen, so it sort of takes away from its value. Especially the, the collaboration interfaces on Blackboard are really not easy, like not easy to use or to collaborate with. You, more, you do it more of it because of the chore than because it's a, it doesn't have any flow. When is the use of PowerPoint helpful, and when is it a distraction? I mean, I think that I think that it's always nice to have it illustrated, but I think that once it gets too far, it just becomes distracting, especially if you've got like some sort of like burdened PowerPoint presentation with all these animations and everything. Like really, as long as like we're consistently being engaged, it's great. But if you're like jumping between mediums, like you just there's always a possibility of just losing someone. Like I know, I was sitting in class this morning, and the minute the PowerPoint projector, like the projector turned off, the person in front of me was on Facebook, and they were on Facebook for the rest of the class. So if it's sort of consistent, I think it's great. But then also at the same time, you don't want to pack so much information into the slide that looking at it, you want to drown in all the words, and you don't pay attention to the slide anymore. So. When using a specific program in class, how much time would you like spent learning the software? I would actually love a little five minute, this is what this program is. Okay. Um, just so that then I can look up more information about it if I want to and then use it for other things. Um, it, I don't think it should overwhelm the class. I work in the media lab, so we get a lot of the classes <laughs> to have, um, you know, comic books to design, um, video, mm -hmm. trailers, all sorts of stuff like that. And I've never actually had a class that's used these, but what I sort of perceive from them, from the students at least, is that the task sort of becomes more about learning the technology than it does about the actual project. Um, so unless it's like a very concise, you know, task, like make, you know, two pages of this comic book or make like a 30 second or one minute trailer, then that's productive for them because they can sort of figure out how to do it quickly. Uh, and to some extent, like maybe fake the software, or like fake the process of it. But when it becomes like a long project, it just seems like they get frustrated um, and end up putting it off to the end and then don't have the resources to you know, successfully complete it. What was your digital media literacy coming into Penn? I used Microsoft Word before I came here, and that was about it. Um, there were papers in it, and once in a while I changed the font. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and those were really experimental poems, you should know. Um, and then I got to Penn, and all of a sudden, things were happening online, and I was using YouTube, and I was using uh, Facebook, and I was using Twitter for work, which is really strange. I, never, I don't have a personal Twitter account. Um, and I'm using it for events and PR and networking. And I use listservs um, obsessively and create poems through digital pieces and write papers using the sources that Wikipedia gives me that I can find in paper and Van Pelt. 
so that all of a sudden I have a list of sources that I can use for a paper without even having to do any research to begin with. And most of the library is online, and I can write a paper entirely of digital sources and not carry any books with me ever. You pick it up as you go along because you have to, but also because it's just so much easier. <laughs> and in terms of research, I think that Penn has, we were talking about this in the technology board the other day, that we have so many resources and it's just, it's not centralized at all. So a lot of times I end up just going to Google instead of going through different Penn search engines and different things that Penn offers. And I just think that if that were centralized, because time, sometimes I've looked through Google, I've looked online and I don't find anything, and then finally my last resort, I'll go to the Penn resources and I find way better things than I would have found anywhere else. But that should be like the number one go-to spot. I mean, I think that I, most students come in with very little experience of like online research, all the copyrights sort of stuff. Um, I know for an art history class I had Ed Deegan from the libraries came um, and gave us like a great seminar on like how to do online research. But for the most part, most of my classes like really they go to Google, and from there they get to Google Books, which gives you some great resources like all the stuff that's no longer copyright, where you can download you know full full texts of books um, is great, but most people don't have a working knowledge of how to use the pen resources that are on the site.